Five for one soul super seventeen here. Let me first like usual, well, like usual. I don't own these pictures, since this is not a paid video. All right, so, um, well, let me explain this as quickly as I can. This whole entire what if, up to a certain point, everything's gonna be in canon. Just a few minor details are gonna be changed. Okay, um, basically, probably, so, how can I say this? So, I'm not, I'm not going to give you an exact timeline, but I'm not having Bell fuse with, basically, the servants, the seven servants, you know, or, well, get the ability, you know, to fuse with them yet, until a certain point in time. Now, if you guys are wondering, this is the fate, you know, servants, like, you know, like, I don't own the name of the anime or the characters, by the way. Just want to point that out. I'm talking like, like you know, Fate Unlimited Blade Works, like Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works, or Fate Apocalypse. You know, the Fate series. I'm kind of like any one of them. You guys have suggestions on what servant, basically, you know, you think would be good for Bell? Okay, I'll, I'll like you know. Basically, what I asked though, you guys also basically kind of like list down the. You know what their, I guess skills would be, and what their you know, basically like say like lancer, you know which basically servant would be you think would be good for Bell, you know that sort of thing. I already have basically a few ideas for the fur like, for a couple of them. So, yeah, I'm also basically gonna, pr um, I do basically. You know, gonna go back and, well, make the whole entire, um, what if for, basically at least two old what ifs. One of Deku, which is gonna be solo level, and I'm gonna go back to it. I was, but it's kind of hard, because I've been busy this weekend. I haven't basically gone able to watch my old series, but I have been able to read some of the manga. Well, online. Um, basically, I remember it's after the, basically, Biru. Yeah, after he gets a Biru and such. I remember, basically, I'm reading from there. So, and I remember the reason why I stopped was because I needed to try to basically wait for it to be finished. And how could I incorporate some of the characters from, basically, the web comic or web, you know, manga you know, into the story, because I'm going to go more so leveling than My Hero Academia, because I thought that would be good. But, yeah. Um, yeah, there's, so basically, that's basically two Deku what-ifs, one old Bell what-if, and someone suggested a symbiote. One time, I went back into one video, um, a Bell Betrayed one, I made that, and I was making a whole entire new thing, you know, where basically Bell and basically, you know, was betrayed by Hestia and all that. I, uh, yeah, no, I, I maybe basically just follow the anime in that one, sort of. I mean, I kind of got to a certain point where they're not following it, but at exactly the same time, why not? I mean, it'd be kind of really interesting to have it where basically it will happen in that one. So, yeah, no, I was trying to basically make a whole creative, you know, creativity story with that, if I remember correctly. It's been two years since I made it. Hold up. Sorry about that, everyone, but yeah. So, just also one name, just wanted to say this real quick. Um,. I'm not going to have anything, like, basically, I'm going to write stuff on his stats and everything, I think they would be, until he, be, you know, gets the servants, or well, the ability to fuse with the servants, you know, so, yeah, I just want to basically point that out, there's a few things I'm going to try to do, so, yeah, anyways, let's get into this, this is what if, basically, Bell confused the servants, part one, hopefully everyone likes this, so, yeah. So, where are we starting off? If they're simple, it's basically when Bell's, well, 
<laughs> Belle is basically very young. You see, Belle was probably around 10 years old, and he was playing with a few people. Well, a few kids of his own age, and basically his, well, village. They were playing tag. And, well, what happens is very simple on that. What, what the, uh, oh, freak, get a minute, guys. Okay, okay, sorry, false alarm. <laughs> Alright, so anyways, like I was saying, he was playing tag with a few villagers' kids. And during this tag, he was running basically from a kid that's saying, you know, get, Belle, stop running so fast. Belle's just laughing and saying, you have to catch me. As in, all of a sudden, basically, when Belle steps on, let's just say they're on, like, a, a hill. A basically, you know, dirt hill is all of a sudden, for some reason, when Belle steps on a certain part, all of a sudden, basically, the ground just caves in on itself. As Belle goes, wah! You know, just basically falling as basically the kid yells out, Bell! He runs over basically to the hole and basically can't see the bottom and then he runs back to the village. Meanwhile with Bell, yes, this hole was very deep. This hole basically should have, well, should basically have not had anyone survived, I mean conscious or deep, you know, but it leads into more, basically, not just like a deep down tunnel, but basically leads down into basically sort of like a major chasm with an altar, which Bell is near. As Bell is basically, you know, is in a lot of pain, and then basically starts going numb a bit because he's losing blood and dying. Bell, you know, having his, fl his basically minimum, well, minimum, blah, short life, okay, there we go, I was going to say minimum, blah, whatever, I basically pronounce it, my, I can't say it right now, but his short life flashed before his eyes, as Bell is just thinking, I, I'm going to, going to what, am I, is something happening to me, 10 years old, he doesn't really know what's happening, so, he basically seeing this altar, Basically, and there's a, a golden cup on this altar as he's looking at it. And he's just wondering, basically, how's this even here? And basically, though, for some reason, he's just sticking out his hand towards it. He's basically leaning his head backwards to see it. As then he's just thinking, I, I want to become a hero. I want to basically, you know, make my grandfather proud. In which, all of a sudden, this, well, golden chalice started to glow. In Bella's eyes, he's starting to see, basically, a, well, a, basically a god. Well, so, you know, not a god, I mean, a goddess appearing. Golden hair and, and golden eyes. Basically, in a voice that sounds, well, very, you could say, hypnotizing. But basically... It mostly puts Belle at ease. And he just hears, You want to become a hero, huh? Why? It was to to basically make my grandfather... He goes, Ah, I see. Well, I can grant that wish. Do you want that? Do you want basically my help? In which Belle doesn't say nothing, but he's still holding out his hand. And she basically see basically, you know, a plead for it. She goes, "All right then, little hero, I'll help you." Just so you know, you probably won't remember this, but hopefully we can basically meet each other again. Can you tell me your name? Which Bell just says, "Bell Cronel, Goddess," which basically he can't really see the person's face very well. But he does know the golden hair, basically, and the face of the voice. And then she just giggles at that. She goes, all right then, my little hero. I am your goddess then. And I won't let you die. And she basically grabs Belle's hand. But in truth, basically, a light is coming from, basically, 
well, the chalice, I would call it, but you know what it is, the Holy Grail. As, well, all of a sudden, basically the lights basically form my hand holding Bell, you know. Yeah, the lights basically holding Bell's hand that's coming from the Holy Chal or the Holy Grail. And then basically what Bell is here goes, I'm going to have to save you based on a way that I'm going to be, well, asleep for a very long time. Hopefully you can understand. Which he doesn't, you know, which he doesn't really hear much now. Which he goes, well, you got to start the process. And so Bell just hears that. She goes, you won't remember this. But hopefully you can basically remember, at least before everything else. Wait for me, Belle Cornell. And then all of a sudden, basically, well, Belle then wakes up. As he just thinks to himself that a dream again. I keep having the same dream for the past couple of months. Why is that? In which then he sees basically Hestia, well, on her basically bed. As he looks over at her and he smiles. In which he basically gets up and, well, gets ready to go into the dungeon. And so, at this point, Belle Cornell basically will go into the dungeon and his life will change forever. As, while well, he goes into the dungeon, he will get down to the third, maybe fourth floor. Where, if I remember correctly, I think it was the fourth floor where the Minotaur came in. Hmm. No, I think it was the third. As then, basically, Belle will be running away from it, and then Eyes Wallenstein will come in and basically kill it, and Belle will run away from, basically, it. And basically, everything will go into canon. Now, though, well, basically, here's the difference. Which, well, while basically Belle is basically talking to Edna, the Holy Grail's waking up. Now, the Holy Grail would basically just yawn inside Belle's, basically, you say subconscious. And she goes, that was a long sleep. Keeping, well, keeping someone alive or well, resurrecting them by fusing with them does have its perks. <laughs> huh? As basically she gets an influx of memories. And she goes, oh no, my little hero. <sighs> it's good that a goddess basically saved, well, saved him in his time of need. But to be fair, no one basically wanted to take him in because they thought he was weak. <sighs> and his grandfather gave him basically ideas like that. Well, no matter. Hmm. What should I do? Uh, oh. <sighs> it's fun, uh, no magic. Even though I'm in basically a part of him. You know, basically, she would just think. He goes, ah, int basically, wonderful idea for him. A new skill he'll need. One that basically, she basically will, you know, remember basically Bell's, you know, thought process about I as Wallenstein. And then basically, she thinks of it. Realis Freeze. You know, she basically, in the, basically, Holy Grail is the one that basically, well, gave Bell Realis Freeze. The skill. She goes, with all this excess, basically, mana he has inside of him, this be wonderful for him. As then, basically, she basically goes to the fauna and basically, you know, makes the skill for him. Or basically, whatever, basically, core for basically the fauna. That basically, you know, the goddess or the blessing, you know, of the god, well, goddess Hestia is. Give, you know, makes the skill appear in it, and she basically would, you know, go, you know, basically get away from it. She goes, now, how do I help my little hero? Hmm. Well, his magic basically I can't basically activate since he has no spells. I can't teach him basically the old world I've been in. I don't even know even how. I don't even know even how I even got to this dimension. And huh, kind of amazed that I even have a human form. Normally, I'm just like you know chalice or goblet. Or whatever, basically, you call it. Well, humans call me. All I know is I'm the Holy Grail, so... 
as yes, basically due to Bell's subconscious, basically and the image he had as a child, basically the Holy Grail gained a human form as basically a goddess. But anyways, as we basically have a flashback to basically the last Holy Grail War, which basically, well, I would say due to basically a wish for the Holy Grail War to never happen again, and for the Holy Grail to be gone from this dimension, basically it was cast out, and basically brought into the basically realm of Damanchi. Or basically, is it wrong not, well, is it wrong to pick up girls in a dungeon? Anyways. And so, some random person found him in the village, and sensed, since he was an adventurer, great power from it, and saying no mortal basically should even go, you know, be near it and basically put it away into that basically chasm basically in that on that altar for no one to ever find it. Heck, basically it was during during the time basically of basically when the haunt. Well, yeah, it was during the time when the basically the gods were just probably a good century, like two centuries in. So yeah. So basically. Bell, I mean, Bell found it, you know, found the Holy Grail by accident. So, it was basically the, got, maybe said the Holy Grail was just shaking her head, you know, and basically goes, doesn't matter, I'm here. And basically, I, you know, had to basically put my, well, I had to basically fuse myself with basically this basically boy. Hold up. Alright, so, basically the, the Holy Grail would just say it doesn't really matter. It was good to get out of that basically cat, well, that stuffy area anyways. So, it's a good thing basically no one knows about my existence in this world. Don't want another Holy Grail war to happen over it. Now then, as she basically rubs her hands together, she goes, let me help out my basically little hero. So, what happens is very simple. She basically has all these cards appear all of a sudden from each class. From basically, well, each class basically, which is Saber, Archer, well, Rider, Caster, Lancer, Assassin, and Berserker. She goes, now, because the reality freeze, Hit basically a single-minded, basically, pursuit, I basically am going to have to choose at least a few at first that would basically suit him. Or at least the heroes that basically will suit him. She basically goes to the archer, she go, and then basically she finds basically one archer, basically, card. She goes, <laughs> hmm, why not? Basically, this would be his first one. At least showing him basically the path of a hero that would, well, most likely what will happen. She takes that card, then she, she goes basically to the Saber class. She would think, huh, Atorius? Mm, and then she'll look at another Saber card and goes, this will work with the Archer card. Takes that one instead. Basically, Caster immediately basically picks out one that would actually kind of basically, show, you know, gives him the most help. And then the rest, I'm not going to say. But I do have a few ideas. So, what happens after that? She goes, now, I have basically a lot of work to do and little time. Hope, I hope, basically, that that's not true. So, yeah. So, basically, while basically the Holy Grail is doing her work, Belle is basically... You know, already stopped talking to him, Edna, and basically went back to Hestia as Hestia basically finds out about the Realis Freeze. She basically can't believe Belle got this skill, and it's, you know, kind of a broken one, which she's kind of getting mad by this, and that won't happen like in canon. Now, though, the only difference is when basically Hestia would basically. How I say, will leave that night. Belle basically doesn't understand why she's so mad all of a sudden. But 
he basically is about to basically, you know, to get up and everything. But then, for some reason, a wave of basically tiredness hits him. He's like, huh? Wait, why am I... Why am I so tired all of a sudden? I... As then Belle basically, you know, starts to basically sit down and... Well, he starts to basically fall asleep. As in his dream, basically... This dream is different. Belle is... Well... Bell is basically back in his home village. Basically, while well, he's, well, his age in canon. And he remembers this day being before his grandfather's death. As he goes, wait, this is different from the others. As then he basically hears, well, his grandfather goes like, Ah, Bell! <laughs> uh, you got done with your chores? He goes, Grandpa? Is that you? He goes, Yes, Bell. Why are you acting so strange all of a sudden? He goes, uh, I, I'm just, I guess I just I missed you a lot. And which, basically, his grandfather look at him so weirdly, he basically goes, <laughs> yeah, you must not have got enough sleep, Bell. He goes, which Bell would just sort of chuckle. Now, he would tell Bell to sit down and such, and basically when Bell does, he goes, Bell. I want to basically give you some advice if I ever, well, if I ever disappear one day. I want you to try to basically live your life the way you want it to. Alright? Which, he would nod. He goes, good. I don't want you to basically leave me alone, so try to find someone special for you. <laughs> Heck, if you actually have an adventure, basically try to basically find someone that actually would care about you. He was then basically Bella would just laugh at his grandfather. He was like, Hey, don't you also mean to get a harem too? Which then basically his grandfather looks at him and then laughs. He goes, <laughs> he pats Bella on the back. He goes, Well, that's only if you become an adventurer, my boy. But if you do, find the ones that would truly care about you. Alright? Which Bella not solely. He goes, Now then I also want to tell you something. Which he basically, Bell's looking at his grandfather, he goes, That goddess you said, that was a while back. Which Bell would basically nod slowly, he goes, When I was ten. He goes, yes. If she ever appears again, follow her basically, well, her words. I feel this goddess will only want to protect you. After all, this goddess saved your life many years ago, Bell. Follow this goddess no matter what, even if you have your own, well, well, god or goddess to basically that you are becoming, well, wait, blah, blah, sorry, words mixed up. Okay, basically he says, even if you basically are a part of someone else's familia. Alright, he was, <laughs> which I was thinking, this wasn't part of my dream, but, uh, alright. Now then, my boy, as they say, he he get basically his grandfather gets up. He goes, "We're going out to the, basically to the field. They basically work now. Grab those weapons." Which Bell would just see two short blades, but they're blurry. He was like, "Grandpa, what are those?" As then Bell would see his grandfather's gone. He goes, "Grandpa, hey, Grandpa!" He runs over and basically about to grab the blades, but then all of a sudden, blue electricity goes, you know, hitting Bell's hands. And he basically, he pulls them back, but then all of a sudden these weird markings are appearing on Bell's hands. He's basically feeling the burn. He's like, what the? It hurts! And he's about to scream out, and basically he wakes up, you know, screaming, clutching basically his arms. In which Hestia would basically, you know, came back, and she was like, Bell! Bell, is everything okay? Which, Bell was like, huh, yeah, just, just had a weird dream. I... He basically looking at his arms and there's nothing. Which, she just looked at him worried. She was, what happened? He was like, I, I just, I don't remember. I just remember though, it was about my, me and my grandpa talking. And then there was these, he says weapons on the table, but I couldn't see them. I, I don't know what 
I don't remember the rest of the conversation or anything. That those are the only two things I can remember. Which she goes, ah, Belle. Which Belle's just looking very confused. She goes, well, don't worry about it since you can't remember. It was probably nothing that important, alright? Which he would nod slowly. He was like, yeah. <laughs> probably nothing really that important. Which, basically, though, he go, he just basically lays back down. He was like, I'm really tired now. She goes, alright, get some sleep. Which he would not. And then he would fall back to sleep. Pestia is kind of worried about, basically, Belle, since he's been having these weird dreams lately. But, to be fair, she can't really do much for it. So, she would know it's late, and she would go sleep on her own. Now then, though, when Bell basically would get up, basically his normal routine, he would basically be going, he would basically get up, well, sneak away, basically, like he would in canon, I believe. No, not yet. No. Yeah, no, I just want to say he sneaked away because Hestia was basically hugging him, and he got it away. He's like, ah, the cause can be really cooling at times. <laughs> Well, it can't be helped since I basically only, I became only her new, well, familiar member, basically. It's only been, like, two weeks, maybe? Yeah, two weeks it's been. Hmm. As I basically was thinking, though, he was like, but that dream last night, it was really weird. I, I don't know why, though. And then basically he kind of gets a, basically his, when he's trying to remember, only thing he can remember is the pain that was in his arms, and then kind of twitches a bit. He goes, that still hurts though, for some reason. And then basically he will hear, goes like, um, excuse me, did you drop this? As Bell basically turns around and basically he sees this gray hair, well, yeah, silver hair girl with basically silver hair, well, silver eyes. You see, and then basically he sees a monster, basically crystal. He's like, uh, what, did I drop that last, yesterday? He's basically, you know, trying, you know, he's just, you know, thinking about it real quick. And she goes, I think you dropped this, didn't you? He was like, uh, yeah, thanks. Basically, you know, basically she would say it's no problem. He was, and he would put it into his bag and such. And she goes, um, excuse me, are you a venturer? He was like, uh, yeah. I'm a venturer. She goes, then, can I have your name? He was like, ah, Belle Cornell. You? She goes, it's Seer. He goes, ah, well, nice to meet you, Seer. She goes, nice to meet you, too. She basically ask, so, if you're going to dungeons, doesn't it basically, you know, take a long time? Which Belle would basically goes, yeah, sometimes you get a tr you lose track in it. <laughs> and he thinks to himself, I... It's kind of weird that this girl's talking to me out of nowhere. And why am I getting this weird feeling from her? As such, though, basically, Seer goes, So, don't you have a lunch with you? Which he goes, uh, no. Which Seer was just basically do like in canon, give Belle the lunch, and he tries to do not, you know, saying he can't. She said, because it's hers, she said she would basically, you know, get basically a meal from basically at the tavern, in which Belle would just sign, you know, thank her or such, and he would basically go to, basically, into the dungeon. And, basically, though, for some reason, Belle's feeling a little bit different. He's basically feeling a little bit more agile and basically quick on his feet. He doesn't understand why, but, basically, the monsters basically seem to be not that much difficult for him. So, he basically, when he gets down to basically the second floor, it's basically, and well, the third, well, the the third floor entrance to the base, you know, of the dungeon. Yeah, the third floor entrance. He's like, should I, should I really basically go down there? Miss Edna basically said I shouldn't, but I feel a lot more confident in myself lately. I mean. He thinks about it, and then basically, though, 
he kind of remember, you know, he would kind of think of eyes, and then he would basically, would just nod to himself, he goes, you had to basically get stronger anyways, right? So, come, so come on, Belt, let's go. So, he, you know, he would try to, you know, hype himself, well, get himself to go down, and when he gets down to the floor four, yes, it is difficult, but it's not that hard. As when the enemy was about to attack, well, a monster was about to attack him from behind, he hears basically a voice that he hasn't heard from a while. It goes, a monster behind you, dodge to the, you know, dodge to the left. As basically he does dodge, but also basically kills the monster. And he's like, wait, goddess? As he basically shakes his head, and because he says, focus spell. If it's just your imagination. As... Yeah, so he basically kills the monsters and gets to the fourth floor entrance. As he wants to go down, but he just says, No, I can't. The monsters are giving me a little bit of trouble here. If I go down to the fourth floor, I have a lot more. So, he basically would go well, back and basically, at least because the monster respawning. It won't, there's basically not many monsters on the first floor or second. Well, first floor, there's probably a good number of them. Second floor, not so much. So, yeah, so when he gets back, he would turn the Valus and such. Um, I would also remember that saying Bellwatcher would come to the tavern and eat there that night. So, yeah. As when Bell basically would basically get his status checked. Basically, Hest, you know, his status will basically be exactly the same way in canon as Hestia just getting mad and basically sort of just, you know, basically tell him, well, I think she said in, in canon, the anime or manga, same way to help Alice, you know, cheat on her and such and just grab her stuff and leave, which he's like, uh, huh? Uh, seriously, God, is acting weird again? So yeah, he basically would go to the tavern as such, and what would happen, I think, in this one, would be a, a little bit different. And, you know, the only thing that will be different in this, truly, because a lot of stuff, it, I'm going to have to skip over because it's just canon stuff. Well, so, a lot of it is. But, most of it, I'm making different, but yeah. So, like in this case. So basically when... Bette is basically talking all this crap about, you know, basically Bell. He's listening to it, and basically he just kind of gets frustrated. And he's about to run, but then he basically stops and just wants to hear what basically what Bette has, well, what Bette has to say. He eats his meal and such. In which, though, he looks at Mamma Mia, or well, Mia here, and just says... I just started adventuring basically a couple of, well, a couple of weeks ago. So it's going to take me a while for me just to get all the money. Probably a good couple of days. Do you mind waiting? Which she would look at Belle and just blinks and just nods. He goes, are you sure you're going to bring back the money in on time? If not, then I'll come after you. Which Belle would just nod and goes, of course. My grandfather told me you always basically have to pay something. If you can't, then try to get as quickly as possible. And when she was not, he was like, Grandfather gave you good advice, kid. And so, though, Mia would just be here in bet. And basically, finally, someone would just stop, you know, would just, you know, make Bet be quiet. As basically, Bell would eat his meal in silence. As an even Siri would be like, you know, come over and go, like, Bell, is everything alright? Which, though, she could see basically anger. And his eyes, basically, but it's not like at anyone else. As uh, so basically, it's with him. In which he goes, yeah, uh, Mama Mia, I'll be, well, I'll basically give you the money I can. But here's all the money I basically got at the moment. In which he would give her it. Basically, she'll see it, and she goes, she goes to see that looking bell. She goes, where are you going? He goes, where else? To get money, the dungeon. And so basically, he'll be walking away. In which basically Mia would just sigh and be like, he's basically hating himself at the moment, just because of what Bet, you know, because of basically that guy from the Loki Familia said. In which basically, since Bell didn't run out, 
basically eyes didn't notice him until basically when he left. She basically saw the white hair. She goes, she would immediately get up and try to run out, but then Be- Bella's already running. Basically, though, she basically, when she gets out, she sees Bella already running towards the dungeon. She was like, ah, I didn't get a chance to say anything to him. In which Loki would just ask basically eyes why she left all of a sudden. And she won't, it would say it's nothing. And basically, you know, come back in and basically that happens. In this case, Bell would basically go for the first, second, the third, the fourth, the fifth. And the sixth gets down all the way to the sixth floor pretty easily. Is Basically, he's just, well, he is basically hurt pretty He's not hurt that badly, but on the sixth floor, he is going to get basically, you know, hurt. But the fact is, in this case, even though he's hurt badly, he's going to end up, and basically, he's already at the seventh entrance. And he basically stumbles, well, not stumbles, but he walks down there. He goes, keep going. I gotta keep going. I gotta basically get stronger. As then he thinks of basically eyes. He goes, he's like, can't. Because I can't stay weak forever. I had to get stronger so I basically could be by her side. And he already been pick up the crystals basically from the monsters. And so. When he gets down to the 7th floor. This is basically where. Well. Things are basically. I mean I don't think basically he went down to the 7th floor. He only went, who only went on to the 6th. Did all basically everything he could in there. And then came back all the way, you know, to the surface. So when Bell gets on the sixth floor, he sees the monsters already there. He just, you know, gripping his knife. And he's just, like, looking at them with termination. And he goes, <sighs> Alright. I can't let my guard down. And I can't basically get sloppy. And he just runs in. Basically, well, let's say a war cry. Screaming, basically, which I'm not doing. But yeah, in that case, Bell, Bell basically would have like a slight difference where his stats would be a little bit, a little bit higher than Cannon when he gets basically them checked out by Hestia, which Hestia will be waiting for him, basically thinking basically Bell abandoned her or such because of what happened. And when Bell's coming back, she sees him basically injured, and she would just run over to him, you know, screaming out Bell and hugging him as he goes. You know, he would just say to Hestia that he wants to become stronger. Which Hestia will look at him and just nod, slowly saying, you will. You know, basically become stronger. And, well, after that, patch him up, check his status. A lot of growth happened, and then she asks, how far do you go to the dungeon? He goes, the seventh floor. I got to the middle of it when I basically was starting to have a hard time. I had no choice in the moment, though. Where she goes, huh? He goes, I, uh, <laughs> I have to go back and basically pay a bill at the tavern nearby. Which Hestia is just blinking. She goes, you have to go pay a, pay a tavern nearby. He goes, yeah, well, let's just say, uh, um, I was kind of roping to something without basically fully knowing. Had to pay for a lot of food, though. <laughs> but don't worry. I think at least after a couple of trips down to that dungeon, basically would be good. In which, basically, she just sighs. In which, she would just nod. He goes like, but no going down to the seventh floor, or the six. Only going down to what you can handle. But with these stats, as in, basically, she was so bell, and basically, let's just say he's already, basically, in... Well, he's almost near F. I would believe. And where she's like, uh, wow, agility and dex are basically in, almost near F, while my strength is basically at least halfway there, along with basically uh, still no magic. Where she goes, yep. She goes, I'm clapping you, Bell. And she's just thinking, darn you. Eyes, what, whatever your name is. And so, after that, Bell would just go down to the dungeon and get as much money as he can after basically he also turns in the money. 
to the guild to get more. Basically, he gets enough to pay back, basically, the, well, all the food, basically, he had to pay for still. And which, at, which only would take him, basically, a day, which she was, huh. So, what happened to him when he basically went down to the dungeon that night? He was, just says, I went down to the seventh floor. In which they just look at him. Just like blinking. And Sierra's like, you you went down there? He goes, I have to get stronger. And plus, I can't stay weak forever. I had to. I mean, I was not to basically pay you guys for the food, so... <laughs> which, basically just Minna. Well, not Minna. Mia would just, you know, Mama Mia, you know, would just nod. He was like, good. It's basically, we, it's good that we have customers like you who would do that, basically, right away, try to get it basically done. In which, basically, Belle goes, uh-huh, besides, the food here is really great. I don't want to basically be kicked out all the time. In which, basically, Mia would just say, thank you. Now then, she basically turns him around, basically gives him the same advice in canon, and tell him to head off, which, basically, Belle was saying, will do. And just leaves, and then basically, while he's running towards the dungeon, he goes, <laughs> it's just like a family. Well, but like, you know, just felt like I was basically left a family. And then, you know, he'll smile. Wait, you know, will smile basically while leaving. But meanwhile, and, you know, somewhere in his subconscious, the Holy Grail is basically, you know, basically putting in some new skills into work and basically in the descriptions of it. She goes, Spirit Fusion. Well, hmm. Uh, that's a shorter version, but it's Heroic Spirit Fusion. Fused with a heroic spirit of seven. Seven, basically, spirits apart the soul. Fused with them. And one, basically, that, well, one that you unlock. Basically, class. Basically, skill. Basically, we'll have, we like, this class. And then, basically, the, like, class, you know, basically, which class it is. Like, like I said, saver. Archer, caster, you know, those classes, and which, you know, name is next to it. And then she goes, he already has magic and skills. Hmm. Ah! Skill. Basically, spirit... Hmm. Spirit trait conversion? Hmm. No. Spirit gain? No. Hmm. Hmm. Trait gain? Yeah, trait gain. That just sounds weird, but tra trait added? Spirit traits added? Eh, sp you know, traits gains, well, trait gain sounds good. So, yeah, she basically is adding this, basically, right, all basically in the air or such. She was, gets three traits from basically this spirit that you turn into. Depends on the trait, basically, you know, will be given. Of a spirit you basically they will get. Cannot get the noble phantasm though. Only basically in the fusion spirit form they will be able to use the noble phantasm. Which basically she would not as such. She goes, now I have to basically find out what what each basically spirit when when and how he can turn them well turn into them. And which one would be the most easiest for him to turn into. And so, basically, she would go through each, basically, card. Well, basically, you know, spirit. And basically, well, find out which one. And so, while that's going on, or well, that will all, all happen, Belle is, well, Belle is basically doing, basically, a dungeon. Basically, you know, getting a little bit further into it. And such, and well, after his next basically stat boost, basically which goes up of quite a bit more, to cannon one, cannon level, basically he has to would leave, and go to Kanisha's party. Now, this is where slightly some things change. While basically Hestia is you know going to the Kanisha party, that night. Bell has a weird dream. He basically sees seven 
figure standing in front of him. Basically, it seems like there's like a, well, a wide, basically, lake going around him. And basically, these figures basically are not being shown, but a, basically a white outline in all blue basically is there. As he's like, what the? As then he hears basically the voice of someone he hasn't heard in a long time. He thought he heard things in the dungeon. And she goes, so little hero, how have you been? In which he turns around, he still can't see basically who it, you know, basically the full face of the person. He goes, but he sees the hair, and they see that bright goldness of it. He goes, G goddess? She goes, you remember me? He just nods slowly. She goes, good. Well, based out, I told you I'd come back. Which he's like, y yes, I, I thought that was a dream though. She goes, well, I want to basically explain some things. As then you just hear a scoff to someone and saying this mongrel basically cannot believe you well, brought us here for him. As another one basically would just sigh be like, do you really have to let your arrogance show right now? Which, he's just scowling at, well, he could basically tell the person just scowling at the other. As another one just like, huh. Man, you two can never go along at all. But, meh, doesn't really matter. As the basically some of them are being quiet. Basically, the rest of them are. Because they're just interested in what's going on. And so... Basically... I would basically, oh yeah, I forgot to, I think I should have mentioned this. I only, based, I don't know many servants. I only basically have seen Unlimited Blade Works. I should have said that in the beginning, but I wanted to get, in, you know, started this. But I'm not choosing anything, well, only a couple of things from Unlimited, Unlimited Blade Works. I am going to try basically look into more of some things. So, yeah, anyways, just want to point out real quick. So, yeah. So basically, Bell just looks at them and then looks at basically his, well, the goddess that saved him. She, he basically goes, I, I wanted to thank you for saving me that day all this time. I, I thought I was going to die then. Which basically, he can tell from the frown on her face, he goes, Little hero, you did die. Well, or was about to. Which Bell's eyes widen. And basically... Bell was just about to say something, but then he's being quiet because he can tell, even though he can't see her eyes yet, that she's basically looking at him basically with a pleading look to be patient. And so he would just be quiet, and she would basically with a smile and goes, Thank you for waiting. How should I say this? I'm, well, I was able to basically bring you back by basically fusing with you, or, well, Becoming a part of basically your soul. Which Bell's eyes wide and goes like, so that means I'm a, I'm what, a demigod? Where she goes, <laughs> oh, you're actually thinking of me as a goddess. Well, I could be called one by the standards, but I'm really not. Which Bell is basically just blinking in confusion and tilts his head to the side. And so she goes, well, how should I say this? I'm someone with basically powers to grant wishes. And there's usually a war that would basically would happen, you know, for this wish of mine. And Bell's like, just nodding slowly. He goes, are you like an item or something? She goes, yes. I'm a holy grail. Which Bell's just blinking. He's like, uh, then why did I... She goes, your subconscious made me, well, appear to you as a, well, a goddess... And I do like this form, as basically she twirls around, which Belle just knows that she's basically wearing, well, a golden dress, basically, that he would basically would have imagined a goddess would have wore, before he became to Orion. Which he's like, heh, yeah. She basically just smirking at him. She goes, anyways, since though I basically was never used, I have a lot of magical power, which is unlimited. And so, since you were basically on the brink of death, 
I had to merge myself with you, which it saved you. But in doing so, there are a few things that have changed about you, Belle. You see, you won't die normally. Maybe of old age, yes, but... It'd be very hard to kill you. Which Belle is just basically just looking in shock. She was, I wanted to tell you this right away, but... I had a few things I basically was working on. And also trying to figure out basically how I could basically give you magic without... Basically ruining... Well, anything for you. But I'm going to have to wait until then. So they're basically getting magic in your magic stat. Which Bell's like just blinking. He was like, so... I'm... Basically, I have magic, but I can't use it? She goes, uh-huh. It's too dangerous to basically... If there's no basically any magic t well, spell you have about having basically magic. It'd be too dangerous for you. But I wanted to basically tell you something, though. In the near future, whenever you're ready, you're going to basically get a, skill, a couple of new skills. It will appear on your back because of me, but I don't want you basically to know it just yet. Just know this. These people here are, well, you'll find out what they are, but they are here to help you in the future. In which, basically, Bell just not solely. He goes, okay. Where she does say, I also need to warn you about something. When you fuse with basically, well, when you fuse with the, how should I say, without revealing anything, which, basically, he just kind of just, we can skip over that part if you have troubles, which she goes, thanks. It kind of is basically hard to not to spoil it, but she would insist, you know, kind of skip over the fuse part with them. And just say, your magic pool will basically be very, well, depleted fast. Which Belle's like, so wait, 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 what? My magic pool will be depleted fast? She goes, uh-huh. It'd be basically too much strain in your body. It basically used all that magic at once. And since basically I've been well part of you for so long, since 10, you basically would start to break down. Which Belle's eyes widen and he goes, wait, break down like... Yes, basically, she kind of basically show basically a sword appear in her hand. And then all of a sudden it just starts like to break it apart piece by piece. Just like that. Which his eyes widen he goes... Does that mean it's dangerous? She goes, nope, that's only if basically if you push yourself too far. If you're using too much magic or past the time limit. Which Belle's just like blinking. He was like, past the time limit? She goes, uh-huh. Plus, I'm also going to just tell you after basically a few things. After basically I give you the skills. Beach one later, okay? Which Belle's just seeing her basically smile at him. He just nods. Doesn't know what to say. And then she goes, anyway, you should be waking up. It's morning. Oh, and you can't tell your goddess Hestia about this. Don't want her to know basically about anything, okay? Which she goes, but I... Basically she goes, which basically the Holy Grail, which is saying, Belle, if she finds out about this, she may try to basically figure out we have to basically separate the both of us. Well, she'll basically at least tell you basically not to believe in me or something. I don't know how, basically, these gods truly are, from the knowledge I have of them. But, there are some things, basically, about these gods that you can't always trust in. There are, basically, well, there are a select few of them that you can, or, well, a good half of them you can trust, but I don't know much about this world, even though it's from your memories. And you, basically, you're technically a shelter child, so... You don't really know much about the world anyways. Which Belle just blinks and he goes, Heh heh, heh, true. She goes, now then, time to wake up, Belle. As basically, you know, she basically just pokes his nose and all of a sudden he just wakes up. Give me a minute, I had to put a log on the fire. Alright, so basically when Belle opens his eyes, he feels groggily, but, you know, well, he groggily gets up and he's like, ah, that, that had to be a dream. But, as Belle basically, you know, 
even though he basically thinks it's a dream, he basically had the feeling that it wasn't, but that warm feeling basically was seeing basically the one who saved him all those years ago. Basically, he can't help but have a smile on his face. He just says, <laughs> So, wasn't a goddess, but something else. The Holy Grail? Hmm. Didn't Grandpa say anything about that once? He kind of goes through his memories about basically, you know, the stories of heroes from his grandpa. But he doesn't remember anything about it. He was, well, if I don't have any, basically, knowledge of it, then maybe I should go look when I have free time. Hmm, that should be a good idea. So, basically, as Bell would just go and is in a dungeon, like a normal, get his meal from Seer and such, as Hestia Weasel would have been already asked Hephaestus for the blade to be made and such. As, yeah. So, so while that's all being done, Bell basically is progressing very good in the dungeon, you know, again, being a little bit more basically getting further into it. But keeping himself at a good place. Because of his stats uh, basically rapidly increasing. I would say he may be, you know, maybe just stay on the 6th to 5th floors. Well, no, the 5th to 6th floor. Not going to 7th. So, yeah. So, for that, for the next couple of days until the monster, basically, festival... You know, when he does get asked by, basically, the cat girl at the tavern to basically go find Seer. But then he does understand her, and then Ryu basically explains it. He understands now, and, well, we'll go over and, you know, basically, do, you know, ba you know, try to look for her, meet Hestia, yeah, canon, everything canon, so basically a certain point. So... Everything would, from there would go to canon, but the fact is, when basically he tries to give Hestia a chance to run away, and he's gonna fight the basically the monster by himself, he would be thinking like it's just like that time with the Minotaur, basically, as. You know, he's kind of letting his fear kind of take over him a bit. But, you know, Bell basically also basically remembering basically that what basically the, well, his basically, even though he knows the name of it, he's still going to call basically the Holy Grail, you know, goddess. Which he would just not be like, I think he'll just call her gold goddess. So he was saying gold, you know, Gold goddess basically, you know, is a part of me, so I can't let her die too. So he basically kind of get a little bit determined to basically, uh, you know, to fight basically the there's a the gorilla albino gorilla basically or well monkey really not really know because a manga and anime different sizes. So yeah, so the first initial thing, Blade breaks. But he doesn't stop there, basically. You know, he would basically at least grab the, basically, the still fight with the least broken, basically, blade. You know, basically, probably try to get it towards the eyes, but, you know, can't because of the visor in the way. So he would at least try to basically, you know, stab it at least... In the jaw, which he would have at least got you know, got up, run up the arm, and be quick enough to at least, well, barely dodging the well the hand that tries to grab him and such. And when he gets to the jaw, the blade the blade breaks him more, and then he does get smacked away. As there would appear, and well, Bell would be able to run towards her and grab her, and then basically does his basically thing, you know. Jump towards her, fall through. Well, 
hit basically a door and then basically you know go down the steps and such into a different area. Yeah, a different area where basically that bino gorilla basically will find them and he grabs her and runs and so they get to that area like they were in canon behind a wall. Give me a minute. Okay. So yeah, sorry, but you know, that wall that basically kicks and then basically reveals basically it's a secret doorway that basically leaves down a path into an area, an open area basically. And then Hestia would do her basically updates his status and basically sees that the status are in canon. We have to help him, give him basically the Hestia basically knife after basically pricking her finger with it. You know, basically the blade will basically grow with him and such. And well, that, and here's basically the thing that would change. Well, basically, Bell is basically here in Hestia and such. His mind is not drifting off, but it's becoming, you know, becoming clear, kind of, you know, steady, not becoming rapid or trying to think of ideas. He would just hear basically, well, the golden goddess saying, She's right. You have to believe in yourself, Bell. And besides, I know you can do it. After all, you want to become a hero, right? I'm here to help you. But even though I know I, I won't do it basically right now, I can at least basically at least tell you basically how, well, how basically to defeat something this size, which Belle basically is just thinking, you know, basically isn't basically its speed. She goes, yes, but it's also you got to watch out for your opponent's movements. Speed is good, but also reacting to your opponent's moves ahead of time could be better. Well, at certain points. Now, go defeat this monster and basically survive another day. Got it? Which Bell would just, well, not slowly as Hestia, whatever, you know, he also heard Hestia, what she was saying in canon. And then basically when the Ibano gorilla comes, basically she would. You know, when it came into basically that area, as she would tell Belle to go, as well, Belle would do his thing. He basically would fight against the monster and such, and basically it would cut the visor off, which basically she was saying, This is your power, Belle, you know, all that. As you know, he would land and such, and you know, kind of slide. He turns around, basically holding his basically knife. And it has to see, basically, a very, well, a determined look in his eye, which is basically would be in canon, basically very strong. But for some reason, in this one, it's stronger. And when, basically, the albino uh, basically tries to hit him with the chains, he just runs forward, dodging it, basically, then going towards the leg, slicing, basically, right through it. Basically, kind of run towards the wall, jumps onto it, jumps off, as it, basically, the gorilla tries to basically grab him. As Bell was somehow mid-air, basically, you know, turns and stabs his knife while sliding down the gorilla's arm, basically cutting it as it screams out of pain. As then, well, it would grab Bell and throw him upwards. As then, basically, he would grab onto basically, you could say, the string with all the flags on it, like in canon, and then basically get thrown down. Slicing right through basically the armor plate on his chest. And then basically, Bell would dodge, basically, well, roll forward, dodge and grab, turn around immediately after getting out of the dodge, and run forward and basically jumping up and stabbing it in the chest. And well, basically, then it bursts. Now, after that, he was thinking, I did it! I did! As he would hear Hestia saying, you did it, Belle, and what well, she does in canon will happen, as, basically, he would kind of see basically the golden goddess there, just look at him smiling, and just nodding her approval and such, and then disappearing with, with a shimmer of gold, and when she's just blinking and such, but then Hestia gets, you know, goes unconscious, and he picks her up along with his knife and runs away. And so, they get back to the tavern and such, Everything would go there from canon, and basically after he finds out that Hestia's, it's a gift was from Hephaestus, and such. 
you know, basically they would sleep there in the tavern, and, well, well, Belle would sleep in the room and such, with, you know, heads down, but he would sleep in a chair, as he would just basically start to basically, you know, dream, as then he's back in that area. He goes, huh? I'm here again. As then, basically, he just hears a guy goes, huh, not bad, kid. You did a pretty good job. Which he turns around, he just sees the outline of the person, you know, white outline, blue. He goes, uh, hi, who are you? He goes, I'm Archer. That's all you need to know for the moment. I was, well, I want to get in contact with you and say this. I'm impressed. You want to sacrifice yourself for someone else. <sighs> want to be a hero that badly, huh? Which Bell's just being quiet, but then nods slowly. He goes, well, I'll try my best to help you out the best I can, but it's up to you to do everything you, well, everything else. When they're basically you're ready. He goes, uh, yeah. Basically, though, he can tell basically the guy's smiling. He goes, but still, I've proven basically your determination. After all, <laughs> it reminds me of my younger self. Before everything happened. Which fellow's like, uh, can you? Which she says, nah, he'll find out eventually. Wake up, kid. As then all of a sudden, Belle wakes up. Which basically hears Hestia, you know, just saying Belle's name. He goes, sorry, goddess. Is everything alright? He goes, yeah, it's morning. Basically, let's get back to basically, well, to our home. Which Belle would nod. And so... When he gets back and such, if I remember correctly, basically, hmm, oh yeah, you know, after basically, you know, he basically go to, he's going to go back to the dungeon, though, but he'll meet Edna, as basically, the whole entire canon little, basically, interaction what happened, like, in canon, basically, where they basically, I know, show him, basically, the, well, but the whole entire battle, like, in his new armor and such, because of his status increased, basically, in canon. So he gets Wealth Crozo's armor, and, well, he also will be looking for a supporter. And that's technically where we're going to leave it off. I was kind of thinking, like, how much. And I kind of realized it's going to be taking me two parts just to get to what are, where basically we can finally get into a lot of different things. Where I can literally start changing things. Alright. So, anyways. Yeah, that's where we're going to leave it off. After basically both get, you know, the Wealth Crozo armor and all basically that band that he put on his arm. By Edna for protection. That's, like I said, that's where we're going to, you know. Because I want to basically kind of try to get this, you know, part two out by tomorrow. Hopefully, along with basically some other stuff. I had a lot of things I had planned, but I kind of let a lot of things go. It's, uh, I don't know why, basically, I kind of try to plan stuff, and then I basically always don't do it. <laughs> yeah. I kind of get into some other stuff and then I just realize what time it is. I'm like, crud. Anyways, enough of me talking. But yeah. So, hope you guys have a nice day, night, wherever you are. Um, gonna try to basically get, like, at least part three of basically Betrayed Bell. And then the next couple of what ifs. Hopefully. But, anyways, like I said, hope you guys have a nice day, night, night wherever you are. Bye, everyone.